Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use the Python requests library to access web APIs using HTTP requests. So get, put, post, delete, head, and options requests. And then also how to process a get request. The response is going to come in the form of a JSON response, and we might want to parse data out of that. So we're going to learn how to use the Python JSON library to parse data out of a get response. So if you don't have the request library installed already, you can use pip install requests at a command prompt to install the request library. It's not a very big library. And I will post all of this code. I'll post this Jupyter notebook on my GitHub site so you can download it and run the code and test it. So first we'll start out with what does a request look like? For all of these types of requests, we're always going to pass in a URI, which is an API endpoint. So that is where we can access the API data. And we have a slightly different API. We're using HTTP bin for most of these. And we can access the API data through these endpoints. So first, let's look at get requests in detail. We can pass in parameters in the URL in a get request. So again, the URL that we, we submit in an HTTP request is called an API endpoint. And here's an example of one. This is a, a get endpoint where we can submit get requests and we'll get a JSON response from that. You could also just click on this endpoint. I put a link to it. You can just click on it and then you can see that you have basically JSON content there. But you can also pass in parameters to get specific items back rather than just the whole page. So with get requests, we have the option of adding parameters, and we'll do that by assigning them to a payload variable. And these are in the format of a dictionary, key value pairs. This is a Python dictionary. And then we'll pass that in by setting params equal to payload. So we're passing in this dictionary to the params variable. And of course, our API endpoint. And then the response is a request response that we assign to the variable r. The request library will build up a URL based on these key value pairs. And you can see that it packs them into our URL to build out a URL that includes all of that data. So here we just print out the URL and we can see what happens. Let's here, here we pass in um, a list for the second key value. So for key two, we passed in a list of value two and value three. And you can see that works as well too. So the URL basically just has key one equals value one and key two equals value two and key two equals value three. So you can pack multiple values even in a list format into the payload and pass that into the parameters for a get request. Now what you get response back, the response is assigned to this variable r We've got a lot of attributes for this response. And then the encoding format, well, it says none. It may be UTF-8 or some other UTF-16 or whatever. That will be the encoding. And then status code is normally going to be 200 for successful response. But you may have like a 404 if you put in a bad URL or whatever. Headers, uh, there are a number of different headers. And you can read up on those in detail. Here we can see what headers we got back. We got access control, allow credentials, true, access control, allow origin, star, content encoding, gzip, and so on. Date, okay, so there's a bunch of different header variables. In this case, we got a response that includes header variables, but we can also pass in header variables in a post request. Text of the response is here. This is the full text, and that includes every, all the arguments that we passed in, key value pairs, as well as the header, all of the header data, and the URL that we submitted to. So that's the whole text of our response. And then we can print out the content, and we can also print out the JSON format. Now the content of the response, you can see, is in a byte format. The new line characters are not decoded. And the JSON format actually uh, is just showing us a response of 200. So all of these variables are available from a response. Now with post requests, you have a slightly different URI here. Our endpoint is a post endpoint. 
And for data, we're going to pass in name Joe. So that is one way to write a post request. That's how we did it in our initial example up above. But we can pass in more detailed values if we want. Because typically, the way a post request is used, you're grabbing data from a form that the user submitted. You're going to load all those values from the form that the user submitted, let's say his name, his phone number, his, uh, key, his password, whatever. And you're going to put those into a payload in a dictionary format, key value pairs. And then you're going to submit those as a data attribute, which is a dictionary. So our post requests basically consists of this payload, dictionary, as the data attribute, and an API endpoint for the post. And we get a response back. We assign it to the variable r. And then we can print out the text of that response. And again, you can see it has all the details of the response. Now, if you want to use a GET request to get currency exchange data, here's a real world example currency exchange data. So, there is an API endpoint on the web here that we can use to access the exchange rate data. So, we'll set our URL equal to that endpoint. We're going to create a GET request using that URL and we're going to assign the response to R. Now when we print out R.text, what we can see is we get all the currency exchange rates, and we get them for a base of euro. That's apparently that's the default. We didn't set that. And for yesterday's date. So if we wanted to get it for a different date, or let's say a different base like US dollars, we can pass in parameter base USD, and then for the date, we have to use a slightly different URL. So we'll use a URL that has the date encoded in it. And so now when we do that, we can see that the base is USD and the date is for 2018, January 15. And that's the response we get. We get the exchange rates for that date and in, based in US dollars. So here's the problem though. This is all JSON data. This is a JSON format. But what we want to do is get access to specific exchange rates that we can use them in our program. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the JSON decoder to do that. Now, the JSON library in Python, it basically just has two functions. It has loads, which converts a text string into Python dictionary or list objects. And it has a JSON dumps function that converts dictionaries and lists objects into a string. So there's only two formats. There's a string or dictionary and list objects. And there's only two functions to convert back and forth. So when we get JSON data back, it's really a string. So we're loading that to convert that string data into a Python object that we can, we can analyze and use. You can see here in our JSON response that the first object inside this dictionary is rates. And that's really all we're interested in. So we can get all of the rates data, which is basically all of this, all the exchange rates, by putting the rates in the square brackets here. And then that gives us a rates JSON object using the JSON loads. And so we print out rates JSON. That's what we get, that paragraph of text. Now what we want to get is the pound exchange rate for England. And so we do rates underscore JSON GBP. Uh, let's see, we can find that in here. Er, here we go, GBP right there. So you can see the key for this dictionary value is GBP and the value is this. So the value it looks like a float because there's no parentheses around it. If there was parentheses around it, it would probably be a string. But just to be sure, I called float on the result. And we set that equal to GBP. So we got a float, floating point value with the exchange rate for GBP to US dollars. And then if we want to do an exchange uh, currency exchange calculation, we can say 200 US dollars equals uh, and I convert 200 times GBP, our exchange rate, to a string, and then I add GBP to it. And what it prints out is 200 US dollars equals 145 point da 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 GBP. So it's pretty easy to get that value and convert it to a usable value for our program. That's what we did here. So the key here is to first recognize that our first attribute is rates inside of this dictionary. And then inside of rates, we need to get the GBP attribute, which is this floating point value. Now, if we're not sure if that's a string or a floating point, we can always just call float on it. And it'll give us a floating point response. 
So we'll have the British pound exchange rate in the form of a float. So here's another example where we're going to use request to get song data. And we have another API endpoint here, which is on musicdemons.com. And they give us an API, API endpoint uh, with artist. So we can look up uh, what artists they have. We just pass in that request. And I only printed out the first 700 characters of it because it's a pretty long response. So you can see that we got a list response. And inside that list is a dictionary of different artist IDs and names, etc. So we get that information for each band in this list. Now I'm interested in the band Coldplay. So that's uh, ID number 21. The way we can access that is by requesting from the API endpoint artist number 21. So we just add a slash 21 to the very end and that gives us ID number 21. And we can see here that we got Coldplay back with the details on that band. And then if we want to get the songs from that artist, again we're going to use the slash 21 endpoint. And then we'll add a custom header, a dictionary, when the key is width and the value is songs, comma, members. So that will return both the songs and the members of the band for us. So when we pass that in, we say headers equals headers. This second headers here is this. And this is the name of the attribute that the request it requires. And we print out the first 700 characters of that. So we didn't, I didn't print out the name of the, the band members. And then if we want to iterate through this in JSON format, we're going to import the JSON library. And we can load the JSON text, print the name of the band, which is Coldplay. We see here the result. And then here we see the songs object inside of this response is basically a list of songs. And each item in that list is a dictionary that contains all the details on one song. We iterate through for each song in songs, print the song title. We can see title here. The first one is going to be something just like this. So we iterate through the songs and we can get the song title. So in closing, some tips on breaking down JSON data. You can get the data out of the JSON object, which is just a combination of lists and dictionaries. You just have to figure out what you're looking for in that response. So it's always easiest to look at the full response first. And then for each list, you're looking, you have to use a numerical index to access it. And for each key value pair, you want to put in the name, the text string, of the key. So if your response looks like this, and you want to access this model Camry, well, the first thing you need is to get cars, which is a list. And then we need the zeroth item of the list, which is this first item. And then we want to get the model. So we put model. So we have basically three indexes for our, our text object. So that wraps up this video on Python requests and JSON. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.